everyone. A very, very warm welcome to yet another exciting session. My name is Kushbu. Well, you have your mathematics exam in another few days. I know that you will be stressed out at this point of time. Some of you might be nervous. I know that mathematics is a subject that seems to be a nightmare for many students. And due to this fear, students are not able to focus on this subject, they are not able to score good marks in math exam. However, if the concepts that we learn, we have understood them thoroughly, if we know all the tricks and the tricks and the techniques, then trust me, mathematics would be one of the most interesting and it would be one of the most scoring subjects. So CBSE board paper is one of the most important stages in a student's academic career. And just be because of the fear in this subject, students basically they run away from it, right? Basically, they're not able to complete their paper on time. And generally what happens is they're forced to leave the questions in the paper just because you're running out of time, right? And some, often it happens that the questions that you are leaving, they are the most easiest ones in the question paper. And I can understand it's very disappointing for students also when they are leaving the questions which they knew really well, the most easiest ones. So do not worry, today I'm here to guide you. I'm going to share some tips with you that will help you how to manage time in the math exam. So the trips I am going to share with you, these I have learned from my own personal experience. So let's get started. So the very first step that you need to take is to that you need to be completely aware of the exam pattern, right? So when I'm talking about the exam pattern, how do we know what the exam pattern is? So what you need to do is you can check the official CBSC grade 10th math sample paper. We have done a session on that as well. You can watch the session. You will get a good idea because we have done a detailed discussion on it. So we need to know the exam pattern well. Like in the paper, if I talk about the basic as well as the standard uh, students who have opted for standard mathematics, the format of the paper is same for both of them. So in all, to four, total 15 questions are there in the paper and this has been segregated in three sections, A, B and C. So in section A, basically six questions are asked, right? In section B, four questions are asked. Section C, there would be four questions, right? All the 14 questions are compulsory. In section A, each question carries two marks. Question, in section B, each question is for three marks. In section C, each question is of four marks. Out of this, basically, in section A, there will be internal choice in two questions. You will get an internal choice. So I can say that you guys are lucky. In section B, there will be internal choice in one question. Section C, there would be two case studies out of these four questions. And one internal choice is going to be there. Talking about the case studies, this is coming for the first time. Obviously, there won't be any uh, previous year questions on this. But we have done a session on case studies as well. So to have a thorough, you know, to do a quick practice on that, you can watch that session as well. Case studies are discussed on all the chapters that are a part of term two. All right. So when you know the exam pattern well, it becomes really easy for you to prepare it, right? Why preparation becomes easier? Because then you know what all type of questions are asked in the paper. You know the difficulty level of the questions as well. Let me give you an example. Let's say if I'm talking about arithmetic progression, right? So you know that the questions that are asked from the arithmetic progression, they are generally easy ones or the medium level ones or in which category the questions are asked do they ask uh, they, do they come in three four three markers i'm sorry do they come in uh, three markers or two markers or four markers so what the exam pattern is so when you know the structure of the exam right it becomes easier for you you know during the exam day to solve it also it saves a lot of time as well another important thing the best thing about the CBSE board paper is that it gives 15 minutes reading time to the students, right? So I would say that you are lucky that you're getting these 15 minutes. So what you need to do is you need to utilize these first 15 minutes effectively. But how to utilize them? So as soon as you get the question paper, give a you need to just go through all the questions very quickly. And you need to categorize those questions into easy, medium and difficult ones. So what you can do is, first of all, mark the ones which seem easy to solve, right? So that you would know that, okay, this much time I can spend on the tougher questions. I'm sure, obviously, it would happen that there might be some questions which you would feel that, okay, this is something that I don't know or I'm not really sure of which concept I'm going to use. So what you can do is you can just plan a strategy like how you can, you are going to attempt the paper. So these 15 minutes will give you an overall idea of the exam, of the question paper. And also you can prepare a rough plan in your mind. How am I going to attempt these questions, right? 
Another important thing over here is when you are going through the question paper, you might come across questions which would be complex or tough, right? So please don't be afraid, do not create panic because it is only ha going to hamper your performance. So what you need to do is, first of all, solve the questions that you know properly, that you are really sure of, the easy ones first. So once you proceed, uh, proceed with that and getting, you, are get, you know that you are getting the right answers, you will give enough confidence to solve the tougher questions as well. Right. So even when you come across a complex question, so what I always tell you, there are always keywords given in the question. Jot down whatever important information you get from there, right? And then try to think in your mind which concept I can use here. Whatever comes to your mind. Let's say I'm talking about a circles question, let's say, and there it is mentioned TP and TQ are the tangents of this. So first you write down the information that the tangents are given. This you can relate with the theorem that length of tangents drawn from an external point to a circle are equal. So that's how we relate the concepts to it. Once you jot down everything, then you can try to relate them. It will help you in arriving at the final solution, right? So these keywords tend to be really, really uh, helpful. So read the questions carefully. Another important thing is that which we generally do not realize its importance, please carry a wristwatch along with you. So wear a wristwatch during the exam, it's very, it's, it's going to be, it's going to actually help you a lot because it always, it actually helps you to keep a track of the time. I would like to share my experience, what I used to do, I'm sure that a basic wristwatch everyone would have, right? So you might be thinking that there would be a clock in the examination hall or I would ask the invigilator. Yes, you can do that, but it's better if you carry that along with you. What I used to do, I used to keep that watch on the table. So while I'm solving the questions, so I would know that on every question, how much time am I spending and how much time am I left with, right? So in your mind, basically it's multitasking. You are simultaneously thinking that this much time is left and this many questions are left. So do I need to increase my pace depending upon the time and the number of questions left or am I going at a right pace? So this is important. So it basically what you need to do is you need to keep a close eye on the watch, right? You need to keep an eye on the watch as well. Alright, another very important thing, one of the best ways to, um, uh, to save time in the exam is you need to maintain proper speed and accuracy and this you can do by solving CBSE sample papers and previous year questions. See, I think in the yesterday's session also and day before yesterday also, I told you the same thing. What we need to do is we will be doing NCRT, that's our Bible and NCRT exemplar, that's a must. After that, what you should be doing is rather than doing, you know, questions from the extra books, it's better you do previous year question papers and sample papers so that you will be very well aware of the exam pattern, you will be aware of the structure of the exam, right? So what you can do is, what happens is when you are studying from, you know, when you are just doing a uh, chapter wise revision, obviously that has to be done, practice is important, I'm not saying that you don't have to do that. But what happens is that when you are doing a particular chapter, basically you are, you are only focusing on the 3-4 concepts or 5-6 concepts at a time. But when you do a sample paper, there you would come across dissimilar topics. One question from, is from arithmetic progression, so might be the next question would be from surface areas volumes right so you need to get into a habit of that so if you you know even at your home if you are preparing in such a way even when you're doing a question paper you're solving a sample paper what you should do is you should keep a watch along with you and you know you can set the timer you need to time yourself when you are even doing practice and at home so when I say proper speed so that will help you uh, you will only develop proper speed when you are solving sample papers and that it's it's not that when you are solving a sample paper at home you started at 10 in the morning and you are solving the same sample paper till 3 p.m. in the evening. So that's not the right strategy. This is not what we have to do. We need to time ourselves, right? Talking about the accuracy, yes, accuracy is very important in math, right? So when we are solving any question, make sure that you give the proper final answer along with the units. I know that maximum students do this thing when they are solving at home, what they do is they would just write the final answer but they never write the units. So it is in their mind, they are like, okay, we know it, I will write that in the exam. Do not do that. Please get into a habit of that. Even when you are solving at home, write the answers along with the units. And as far as calculations are concerned, there are chapters like surface areas and volumes which are very calculative, statistics. So in such chapters, I have given you some tricks wherever it is possible, right? So kindly, you can, if you do not remember those tricks, please watch those sessions, right? And you can see how am I solving it. In the yesterday's sessions also I told you when we come across calculative questions, how we can reduce our time on that. So all these things will come with practice only. So these 3-4 days that are left, you need to spend time on these things as well, right? 
Second thing, when obviously uh, calculations when you are doing somebody, I remember asked me yesterday only that if we could um, if we could solve it on the right side of our answer sheet, please do not do that. It will get really messed up. What you can do is you can uh, do all the rough work at the last page of your answer sheet. Use as many sheets as you want, right? Nobody is going to stop you. Even when you are doing the rough work, that has to be neat and clean because sometimes we are not able to understand our own handwriting. It happens. It happens with me as well. So that's how you can maintain a proper speed and accuracy in the paper. So sample papers are must. Another important thing uh, that you should do that you should make a well-planned preparation strategy for, for your exam. So when I'm saying well-planned preparation strategy that you will only uh, get to know when you know the exam pattern, right? For this, please watch the CBSE sample paper session that we have done. Go through that paper, see what type of questions are asked, how many questions are coming from each chapter, right? And what is the level of the questions also? You would know, should know the marking scheme. You should basically, so what you can do is you can set the time according to the topics. I tell you something. Let's say from section A, as I said, six questions are coming from section A, right? Internal choice would be there in two questions, two marks each. So two marks each. You need to time yourself according to this. It's not that I have seen students, they start the paper very enthusiastically because they feel that, oh, I know so much, I know all the answers, wow. But still they end up leaving a few questions. Why this happens? Because you do not know time management. So what you can do is, I'm sharing my strategy, what I used to do. Let's say I'm solving section A, there are six questions, right? I know it is two marks each. I know my speed, I know my pace, right? Because we know ourselves the best. So I know that these two marker questions, I can solve each question in two minutes or let's say three minutes. I'm taking on an average, let's say three minutes, right? Nobody would be taking more than that. So this section A has to, com to be completed within 18 minutes. I will not be taking one minute extra than 18 minutes, right? So that's how you can strategize. So this will actually help you finishing the paper before time. So if you follow all these six steps strictly, trust me, you will not just be able to complete the paper on time, but ace it as well. And that's our primary goal, right? To ace hundreds, in, to score hundreds in this academic year. All right. So before I end the session, I would like to give, share some more tips because I know that during the exam days, we are very nervous. We are very stressed out. So we don't really realize that the importance of proper sleep. So please take proper sleep a day before the exam. That's very important because I know that even if I tell students that please take proper breaks in between when you are studying, but still there would be students who would be stretching, uh, studying at long hours at a stretch. So please don't do that. Breaks are also very important. Take proper sleep before the exam day. Otherwise, you will be drained out of energy. You won't be able to concentrate well. Another important thing is that Please read all the instructions given on the question paper very carefully and read the questions carefully because many times it happens is we do not read the questions carefully and because we are, we are panicking, we are nervous, we are afraid, right? Even when you come across a tough or a hard question, just don't worry, just break that question into small, small chunks right? Mark the keywords which are given in the question. Jot down all the information that is given then try relating them with the concepts that you know. You will definitely be able to arrive at the right solution. And the last 30 minutes, you should have the last 30 minutes to go through your answer sheet once before the final summit. So what I used to do is, let's because I, our paper used to be for 3 hours. So what I used to do, I used to think that I have to finish the paper in 2.5 hours. I because basically, I am timing myself, right? So you need to time yourself that I have to finish the paper in this much time. The rest 30 minutes, I will be revising my paper or I'll be spending 15 minutes on the questions which, you know, which are the tougher ones or which I'm not really sure of, right? So this is the ideal strategy. If you follow this, trust me, you will be able to complete the paper on time definitely. I know this is a lot of information to grasp, but don't worry, we have got you covered. Now, let me give you a glimpse of the upcoming session. Our next session is on May 3, that is Tuesday at 7 p.m. I will be discussing the mega term 2 quiz for maths. That's going to be the final mentee quiz. Wow, that's going to be interesting, right? And you know that we have free trial classes as well. Link is given in the description below. Please click on that link and get all your doubts clarified instantly during the class. And please like, share and subscribe so that you do not miss any new updates from us. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.